What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I'm joined with the Marsman crew to talk about our newest edition of the Marsman newscast, where we talk about the biggest gaming news topics and the most recent days and weeks. So the two topics that we're going to talk about today, first on the docket is going to be the obviously the CMA blocking the at the Activision Blizzard King deal with Microsoft. And obviously our big thing is not going to be talking about specifically the whole crux of the deal of you know, the, the fanboy debate on whether this is fair or not fair. This is really just going to be analyzing what is the impact of this overall. But for people who don't know, obviously, the, the competition and markets authority, the CMA, uh, is an independent group that basically investigates mergers and deals that happen uh, and kind of the analysis of whether the impact that this has on the consumers in the UK. And basically, the past few, past week, or really for the past year, we've been seeing this entire debate really happened on the forefront all the you know fanboys have been drawing their battle lines and their picks pitchforks and axes and everything so they've been fighting it out this whole time and just recently because remember the deadline was around april 28th where they would kind of make the decision on whether they would block the deal or not and so the cma announced that they would block the deal mainly based off of the concepts of mobile mobile or cloud gaming um, which goes along with their reasonings that it would be too uh, it would be too restrictive to the rest of the market with Microsoft having a uh, kind of a lead on that cloud gaming component. So um, we're going to be discussing really the impact that this has on the three major brands and excluding PC because PC is kind of like engulfed with everything at this point. But three brands of, of Xbox, PlayStation and Nintendo and kind of what does this mean for them? And I'll start with Microsoft, I think. When I'm looking at the situation now, I think a lot of people, a lot of business pundits out there are saying, I mean, they're going to have a whole analysis on the deal. Why they think it'll go through in the long run. Obviously, the whole peel process is going to happen. But um, a lot of people are saying that even if the CMA blocks this deal right here, it doesn't necessarily mean that the deal cannot go through. It's almost just saying that this is one component. I was the big market with the UK, but it also depends on what happens with the EU and obviously the FTC, they, they're kind of ones that really make the final, like really declaration and uh, and whether or not the deal uh, will go through or it'll have to wait until the appeals happen. But overall, when you think about the impact, Microsoft can and even just thinking, let's just say if the deal is still alive and if it still happens, I think the impact that this could mean uh, with this, if the CMA sticks with their, with their decision that they might have to do one of two things. They either one, We'll have to make a separate division of Activision Blizzard that it's called like Activision Blizzard UK, which companies are basically do uh, often when they try to have a separate committee of people kind of making decisions specifically for the UK rather than as a whole company, um, which would be their way of trying to circumventing this issue or by removing Game Pass from the UK, because that was one of the big things that they had discussed in that deal, where if now it just means that let's just say if they want to put call of duty on game pass which seems like that was their main goal or their objective of this purchase that means that everywhere else in the world let's just say if the eu and the ftc do agree to the deal that means that only in the uk we would not go on game pass which would obviously hurt the consumers that, that have xbox and have game pass they'd be annoyed by that but that would be their way to circumvent this but um because game pass was the one of the biggest components of why the deal had happened or the block had happened and now, not about console sales. It was more about the impact that cloud gaming and Game Pass had in that market. Um, but if the deal doesn't happen, it just means that Microsoft now either takes the remaining money to invest in their own companies or buy something else. I mean, they right now they have a, a clear connection with Ubisoft. I think that they, they have this Ubisoft Plus that's kind of tied to Game Pass right now. Um, and it seems like they either are going to go for, I mean, if that deal doesn't go through, you need to spend money on like, because remember the way that the market cap works means you have to spend this money in some way, whether you're going to now take the money and reinvest all of it, or you're going to take some of it to do for mergers or, or paying for to buy something else. Um, I'm not sure if Ubisoft is looking to get bought out, but if they were, I think Microsoft would probably go in after Ubisoft or Highly doubt they would go for EA, but Ubisoft is smaller than uh, Activision Blizzard. But that would be like the probably the next big fish if they're doing that. I mean, at the end of the day, you could you could do a lot of things with with what sixty eight uh, billion dollars. Like you, you could do a lot of money. Um, you can invest in your in your companies. You can get rid of this contract issue. You can do a lot of things. But I think 
I think Microsoft, knowing their trends, I don't think they're getting ready to get rid of this whole contract debacle. I think they're gonna just buy something else. And I think it'd be Ubisoft if the deal just collapsed completely. I know this block is one thing, but that's just there's a lot of people are automatically jumping on the boat that it's gonna just die everything. So I want to get you guys' opinion on Microsoft first, because that's obviously the most direct impact that this deal has. Um, so, Angelica, I want you to kind of chime in next. What was, what do you think is the impact on Microsoft? Yeah, I know you mentioned the two scenarios that could happen for Microsoft. You're not claiming one that they should do either of them. I just want to clarify that for the audience. But um, I don't think pulling out of the UK is is a smart decision. Uh, for them so move removing game pass on call of duty for the uk to keep it for everyone else when the uk is their second largest market is going to be a big problem i think for microsoft fans in the uk but if i look at the short term and long term impact short term i don't think it affects a lot because the activision blizzard game is whether microsoft owns them or not is still coming to uh, xbox consoles so it doesn't really affect uh, the xbox uh, players and even Call of Duty, they have a current contract to 2025. I don't think you can go on Game Pass even until after that. So anyone was expecting next year's Call of Duty to be on Game Pass. I don't even think that could have occurred, even if the deal has gone through. Um, so short term impact, I don't think it affects a lot of things. Um, Long term impact is the thing. And I think Ubisoft is a very good um, analysis that Mars Man just gave. They, they've shown a lot of close ties with Ubisoft. And this is a lot smaller publisher than a company like Activision Blizzard, which will be a lot less headaches if Ubisoft is looking to be brought, um, which if you're going for a company that everyone's saying EA is like the next one, you're going to run into the same problems that you're running with Activision Blizzard if you choose EA. So again, I don't know if that's the, the best decision, but another company to keep an eye on guys, Sega. Xbox has had major problems entering the Japanese market and Sega, which they have also had close ties with at times, they just had Persona jump onto the Xbox uh, Game Pass. That could be a way to help them get a little bit of momentum into the Japanese market. So those two companies, another thing, how about just buying instead of publishers, you're just buying uh, single groups. You're, you're buying, uh, you know, not these large scale publishers, but the smaller, the smaller groups that maybe indie groups that you can bring on and invest in your company. Yeah. So hockey, what was your feeling about Microsoft? The impact this has on Microsoft? Yeah, you guys both had good points, and I'm pretty much just going to piggyback off of what you uh, both said. Uh, but my main thing is going to be, you know, listen, they, they got $60 billion if this doesn't go through. Uh, Mars Man, you had highlighted this. They can definitely invest it in their own companies, um, acquiring smaller studios, making sure that, you know, the games that are coming out come out correctly. Um, and I think, you know, paying their actual employees or not having contractors work on a lot of their um, games is, is something that can be a positive impact as well. Um, and if the appeal does go through and it isn't a success, you would hope that they still take some of that money after spending, you know, 60 plus billion dollars. Hopefully they still take some type of money after that and, uh, you know, invest it in their in their good IPs like Halo, like Starfield coming out. So that's the main concern. And obviously uh, the quality of Call of Duty is is the biggest uh, thing I, I think for me. So whatever happens, I just want a quality Call of Duty. I just yeah. want this band, that's what I want. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, that is now not gonna end for a lot longer. Yeah, and no, uh, it just felt like this was like a a news that all the fanboys were now just happy that this this whole debacle doesn't end. About it it's for like another year. Just, it adds content to the fanboy content creators that will like Another really, year. literally have nothing. I don't even know what they would talk about. Like once this ends, like I don't know what, yeah. like people. There's channels that have literally been created because of this debacle or this this debate or this deal, and I don't even know what they're going to talk about after this. I mean, it's really it it be it really be interesting to see what happens. But we have to talk about now, obviously Sony and Nintendo, and I'll yeah. combine them both because at the end yeah. of the day they aren't necessarily as directly impacted by this uh and obviously this is a microsoft deal this is what they're trying to do and sony really was the forefront of the group that was obviously trying to challenge this more than anybody else but because uh, obviously, to, to be clear just came out google was another one that was hitting for a long time and google just recently came out that they are also against the deal so it, sony it, was in the forefront but is, google uh, was revealed now from the CMA as being another. Well, yes, because it, I mean, from looking at Google and Apple, when they're the, the kings of the mobile market, so I mean, at the end of the day, like they, they'll of course they're going to be happy that this is the deal doesn't 
is blocked because now you have you don't have another competition competitor to jump in the fray. I mean, that's the other thing when it comes to like mobile gaming. It's just like it's you know, it's it's same thing with cloud gaming. Like, because I don't want to jump into the whole crux of the deal um, because you can have a debate alone just on whether the deal should have been blocked or not. Um, because mobile gaming and cloud gaming are one mobile gaming is a lot of net worth right now in, in society um and that within itself is is showing the clear cut the two groups that control everything are either nervous about competition or just want to keep it the same as what it is right now and cloud gaming is so small that literally like no there's no money being gained from it at this moment there's no nothing benefiting anybody like Stadia sucked so bad because it was all cloud gaming server. That's all Google Stadia was. It was a cloud gaming console device, and it collapsed before it even released. Basically, released and got any momentum. So, I mean, it's just it's just outrageous. But um, like we can have a whole debate on that concept. But really, the debate I, I'm really talking about is more about um, you know what does this impact have on Sony Nintendo? Sony's perspective is that they kind of won the kind of short term win of getting the uk to block this deal for the moment or at least for the time being because of the fact that obviously uk is a big market for sony and they, they you know they are securing that market by you know making sure that this that activision blizzard is there's no shadow of a doubt that this is a multi-plat you know company that has these games going on all brands and not saying that it would change if it went to microsoft or not but you know, there is that like the, the the debate that oh, who's to say that yeah, Call of Duty might stay multiplayer, but what about you know World of Warcraft? What about Diablo? What about these other guy, games that are you know Diablo Four seems to be like a pretty good game at the moment based on the beta. You know, would that now obviously that Diablo Four wouldn't be exclusive, but what about the next Diablo? Would, would there be certain content that drops mainly only for Microsofts if they were to purchase them? That is always a question that is put into the minds of people with this deal. But if it's blocked, it means that for the moment that, you know, that, that all this stuff is still multiplied and now it still opens up Sony to, to at least gain that advantage of, on Call of Duty. Like right now, most of their player base is a Call of Duty player base, right? So they don't have to worry about that for the moment. And I think for the, for their impact is it's just goes back to normal. It just goes back to what it was already where, you know, Call of Duty has been multi-plat and for Nintendo, it just means you're not getting a Call of Duty on your current console, whether your next console, whenever that may drop, it needs to either match the current level of COD or or not. I mean, if you don't, then you're not going to get a, a the brand new Call of Duty game. Um, you know, we were just talking about before, but Nintendo, like, they, they don't have a Call of Duty game to call their own. Um, and Activision doesn't seem like they're going to make a kind of a, a version that can be played on a Switch or a, something like that. So it needs to be meeting, I guess, their standard in order for it to go there. Um, so for Nintendo, it just means you're not going to get a Call of Duty on your console unless you have an updated console that can match Xbox or or PlayStation's level. Or uh, yeah, or, or that's about it. I mean, that's the impact I see on both these consoles. Sony, nothing changes. Nintendo, you gotta, you gotta do something about your consoles, you know, viability with these updated games. But hockey, I want to get your opinion next. What is your feeling about the impact that this has on Sony and Nintendo? Yeah, so for Nintendo, like you said, I'll kind of believe it when I see it. Uh, for Sony, they are safe right now. If it obviously gets blocked, they, they really don't have a, a whole lot to worry about. I think they still need to take the time and make a you know first-person shooter game. You know, they have the skills and everything, but the impact for them is not as big as Microsoft if this does get blocked. Uh, but like I said, if it goes through, you know, they need to take a step back and, and put some workers uh, on making a new first person shooter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's going to be their thing because right now they don't have a first person shooter. They just have Splatoon, which is a third person shooter. So it's like, you know, you got, if you want to try to expand your market to be, not saying you're gonna have a Call of Duty killer, because like you know, how many Call of Duty killers can you really have? Um, I don't think X Defiant is gonna do it, but uh, you know, can you get a game that at least is get, takes away those not takes away, but at least has fans of first person shooters go onto your right? And uh, so, Angelica, what's your opinion here about the Sony um, impact on Sony and Nintendo? Yeah, short and long, long term. Short term again doesn't really affect a lot because you know they had the current contract up till 2025 with Call of Duty, but 
Um, this kind of affects the long term. And I think it buys Sony time because it's pretty obvious to Sony and to the rest of the gaming industry that Microsoft is looking to publish, uh, is looking to buy publishers. And um, so to me, you kind of saw it in their revenue report, their fiscal report that Sony is going to be putting more money into not just their first uh, line studios, but also into potential acquisitions. So they're they're also looking at what is going to happen in this appeal process as well, because they might have to respond in kind to buying a publisher. And I don't think that's great for the market, but this is what we might end up being. But if it's a battle for some studios and each side starts buying up some studios, it is what it is. But that's when it, but they do need to create some variety in their marketplace. They do a really good job of that third person storyline games, but you know, getting into some of those first person shooters, I think is a, is a strong desire. Nintendo needs to prove that they could play a call of duty. I think they'll cut a deal with Microsoft, which they did that 10 year deal, but they also have to prove that they can run a call of duty. Um, so they need to do that with the switch pro. I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. So listen, now let's jump to our next topic, which is going to be talking about really the state of modern gaming. Uh, I wish I could add in the act, man, modern gaming uh, emote, because this era of what we are playing through right now, as much as gaming has grown more than it has ever done before, is also in a time period where either developers give less crap about the con the, the quality of their games on release, or they, the suits are really forcing the hands of these developers to pump out games when they just are not ready. And you can see this by the state of recent releases that it's it's one or the other and you'll see this with star wars jedi survivor you see this with redfall releasing you'll see this with forespoken you see this with halo you'll see this with last of us pc port all of these top level games have either released unfinished or finished broken where things are just unplayable or they they're just not they can't be played at all because the quality of the look the actions of the computers the the, the gameplay itself is shattered or there are times where the game looks uh, game plays great but it looks like it should be run on an xbox 360 like it's just it should not be to this quality and it's unfortunate because it, it feels like every time that you know i, I want to ask you guys fresh what's your frustrations and i'll start with mine first i feel like the problem is, is that with all this new technology and it feels like people are, are either one making remakes all the damn time or they just they are it's just living off the bare minimum of what fans are are, are accepting and it's unfortunate because sometimes it's like even the fans themselves kind of give too much of a leash to developers that they care about where it's like you know i, I you know for for xbox fans like you look at redfall and say yeah you know what uh i wasn't mad about the 30 fps um but they're like oh everything else is perfect right uh, it's like you know you have to look at these games developers and say you know, a 60 FPS at this point in time, 2023 should be a common thing, right? Um, or even Star Wars Jedi Survivor. It's a 30 FPS game, mate, basically. It, it fluctuates, right, all the time because it can't get past 40, right? And this game has been past 40. It, it like barely it gets stay past 40. Yeah, yeah, it just, it barely can just stay past. Like, it's just, it just can't st consistently do it. And like Forspoken being broken on both the PlayStation and on the PC port. So, Last of Us, it's a remake of an older game, right? And it's broken. Literally, Joel going blackface. Like, that was literally happened in the game. Or, like, or Halo, where you release with not much content to play on, right? And you only really have, you really think about it, you know, I really wish they had a, like, adjustment, like a kind of a formula to put review scores in that adjust for, like, inflation or just for lack of content because whether you look at the the current state of these games like jedi fallen survivor i mean I, I, jedi you know survivor i i look at the game overall metacritic's are hitting around an 80 but the look of the game looks off, like it's 87. Oh, it's 87 sorry 87 you look at it and it's like this game should look better right it's it, it can't barely crack over the the criteria for a, a, a the fps of this of this generation you look at games like obviously Forspoken and Redfall. Like you look at their Metacritic, Metacritic scores, they're down for a reason. And I'll say the same thing with like The Last of Us and Halo. I think I'll put Halo and Last of Us on that meta score like same par. Where you say you're telling me that The Last of Us meta score should be that high when the PC port can is is breaking or Halo. As much as I love Halo Infinite, and I maybe my score was way too high for my first 
taste of it was because I enjoyed the gameplay. But if I was to adjust a score at the time, it would be probably closer to like that 80 level. And then now I probably would say, yeah, you know what? It's probably around 87 because now there's content to play. But back when it first released, it didn't have that stuff. So it's like there should be an inflation number, a formula to plug in and say, all right, does it have lack of content? Then it should drop some points. Or is it look matching the level of the look? As much as games don't have to be beautiful to be a good game, but sometimes it's like you're in an era where these things should be commonplace. And if they're not matching that, then they should be get, taking the brunt of that criticism. Um, and I'm just frustrated with how these devs either one, don't give a damn, or these suits are way too involved in the releasing of these games because I thought that Cyberpunk would have been the example for everybody to say, don't release a game if it's not ready. And for some reason, apparently, according to the fans, well, Cyberpunk now is a very successful game almost three years later on, right? It's almost like, yeah, great. I'm glad that it took three years for Cyberpunk to finally be a very good game that it should have been on the first day of release. But I don't like that time span, me having to wait three years for a game to be good when I bought it at the top level price at the moment. So uh, I know I ran on my own rant here, but... Uh, uh, Angelica, I want you to give me your opinion. What's your frustrations that you see with this modern gaming issue? Yeah, frustration is very high. And uh, Respawn actually put out a letter uh, at day one when uh, Jedi Survivor came out. A pretty much kind of a apology, not really apology, but you know they knew an issue was coming. And, and it's a huge red flag when you see a large day one patch when the game just releases that they anticipate they know that there's something wrong here. Um, and you mentioned a lot of different uh, games, um, and some of them are different scenarios, right? But it comes really to the end, same conclusion, which is this is a mixture of development problem and the publishers, these big co uh, corporations, all share blame in this. And it's it's just multiple issues, whether it, they need more time to make the game and the, and the publishers will not give them that time or something has gone wrong during the development cycle and they're trying to get it out knowing that they have this live service constantly online that they can update things as time goes on and it's great to have that for when you can add content and provide updates when bad things happen but they're using it as a crutch for solving and trying to fix games in real time um, on these major releases and they are charging premium prices um, and a lot of it is a mixture of both the developer and the publisher, I think, share both um, major. They, they're both to blame for this. And like you said, you would think that uh, Cyberpunk would be kind of the ripple effect down the gaming industry. But then Battlefield 2042 comes out and you say this is going to be the one that sends a message to everybody. And now, you know, we get what we get with, you know, bad performance, Star Wars Jedi, which is a very strong game. And the performance hurts. You get Redfall, you get Forspoken. And The Last of Us, again, it was a remastered on the PS5, which got a fine score, but the PC port, which I think was graded fairly, got a 60 on the Metacritic for their PC port um, because the PC was a disaster. Yeah, so, Haki, what's your feelings about this modern gaming of uh, of, the, of the current age? Yeah, I agree with uh, you both. I am definitely frustrated. I think it uh, it started with Cyberpunk, and I know you said this, uh, you know, this era of, of modern gaming. I know games had come out, you know, before 2019 uh, that, that had problems and bugs, but nothing uh, that I've ever seen like Cyberpunk. And I feel like that kind of was a domino effect, and it hit all the games that I loved, Overwatch, Battlefield, you know, Halo, and Call of Duty. And Call of Duty being the best out of those four shooters, which I never thought I would ever say, uh, you know, or pick that. Uh, out of the four that I had just mentioned, but um, it it really is a shame. I mean, like Frank said, they have live service or they have free to play, and that gives them an excuse to give us an unfinished game and you know allow them to not feel so bad because they're just going to add you know things later on. And I just don't think that uh, that that we deserve this. I think we need uh, to either step up or not buy games or do something, protest or you know get the pitchforks and the torches out and and do something about it. If you have your own opinion about any of the stories we talked about today, please let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. You can join us on Twitch, where we stream two to three days a week, and you can find that in the description below, as well as find us on all of our socials, also located 
in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace out, guys.